Hi there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean from SMK Marketing. Today, what I want to talk about is this big guy. This is going to be a long-term review of the 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro from 2021. How I have used it to run my business on a daily basis and why I recommend this to almost anyone if you can afford it. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on that as we go along. So get subscribed. Hit the like button if you do get value out of this video and let's get straight into it, shall we? So then, what is it? Well, this is the 2021 16 inch. It comes in essentially the base spec with the M1 Pro chip, which has a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory and a slightly upgraded one terabyte of internal storage. So as soon as this one was revealed alongside the 14 inch, the redesign in October, 2021, I jumped on it, placed my order and got it to hand. And I have been using it to run my business on a daily basis ever since. And I absolutely adore this thing. It is effing spectacular. Now, quick disclaimer. Yes, the power on this is total overkill. About 80% of other small businesses do not need the M1 Pro chip. The M1 chip or the M2 chip are more than enough. To be perfectly honest, most Intel chips from the past five years are going to be more than enough for what you'll need if you're going to be browsing the web, creating Excel docs, doing the odd bit of word processing, that sort of thing. Where this power really comes in use for me is just the speed. Yes, it can type up a Word document as quick as my old 2014 model, but the old 2014 model takes forever to even open pages which is you know meant for apple products this opens it in an instant it's just it's lightning fast it can run a hundred chrome tabs with no slowdown whatsoever which older models just can't do that's what i mean when i'm talking power but do you need one that's kind of the main point of this video is it going to be useful for you running your small business medium business large business whatever it might be and again the power is a little bit overkill but Let's kind of step away from power for a little while and just talk about the machine for what it is. I always wanted the big laptop, the 15 inch, the 16 inch MacBook models. I just could never afford one. Now I could and I wouldn't go back. And maybe like me, you quite simply just want the big laptop. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Until Apple finally release a 15 or 16 inch version of the MacBook Air, this is what you're stuck with until they do that in terms of having a big MacBook. Maybe also you just want the longevity that this kind of power will give you, this MacBook. It is easily going to last you 10 years. It's a great investment. And yes, that's what it is. It's an investment. It's expensive. There's no two ways about that. Obviously, there are alternatives. In my previous video, which link up there if you want to go check that out, I talked about the brand new M2 MacBook Air and how that is pretty much the perfect laptop for small business running. And it is a beautiful laptop. It will do almost everything you possibly want out of it. But it's still only a 13-inch screen. So again, if you just want the bigger laptop, that's not going to do it for you. Also, if you want a desktop setup to go with it, the limited ports on the Air are really going to annoy you because at the very least, if you have just a standard screen on your desktop it probably has an hdmi link not a usb-c cable so you're going to need external ports and dongles and all that sort of crap to even make it work as a desktop computer on this you don't need that it has an hdmi port so then why not the 14 inch well again it all comes back to i suppose the size i mean the point of this is do you want the most perfect all-in-one laptop that works as a desktop and a laptop and is immensely powerful and has everything you want in it the 14 inch has the power has all the same ports but the screen is much smaller, making the notch much more visible. The power is the same, but the fan system in this is much better. I have never once heard the fans kick on. The 14-inch does kick on its fans pretty regularly. And the 14-inch takes a massive hit to battery life. This 16-inch with the M1 Pro chip is the highest rated battery life of any MacBook ever made. Apple rates this for about 21 hours. The brand new MacBook Air with its M2 chip by comparison still only get only still gets 18 hours so even that with a brand new chip in it still can't touch this this is the king of battery life so maybe you're thinking i know i wait for the m2 version to come out the m2 pro because apple are now into that second generation of silicon chips the m2 pro will be much more powerful than the m1 pro of course and you know you're right except no you're wrong because m2 has only just come out and it took over a year for m1 to go from m1 to m1 pro so at the very least, you're looking at probably next year before an M2 Pro happens. And even at that, why would you wait? 
if you're, especially if you're going to be running a business, you need something to run a business with right now. There's no point waiting. There's always going to be something better down the road. Always, always, that's how technology works. Buy now what you need now. Now then, before we go on a little bit further to all the key features that make this such an incredible laptop, I just wanted to say, if you are enjoying this video and are getting value out of it, please do like and subscribe to the channel. I want to hit that 1,000 subscriber number as soon as possible, and as soon as I get there, I'll be giving away a brand new set of AirPods to one lucky subscriber once we hit 1,000. So be sure to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell as well so you get notified for every new video. And who knows, it might be you when we hit that 1,000 subscriber who wins a free pair of AirPods. Now then, let's touch on the power, shall we? Because obviously that's a big thing. It is a MacBook Pro after all. I won't go into too much detail about what the Geekbench numbers actually mean. I will flash these graphs up right now, but all you really need to know about them is that what these graphs show is that this laptop, and that's a really important thing to remember, is as powerful, if not regularly more powerful and faster than the iMac Pro, which costs at least twice as much when it was new, and the Mac Pro, which costs three times as much at its base level when it was new. I could be video editing multiple layers of 4K footage for a client, have 20 Chrome tabs open, 10 Safari tabs open, every app in the world open, stage manager running it all, and it won't slow down at all. The fans won't kick on. It might get a little bit hot, although I have it sat on a desk, so I'm not touching it anyway, but the fans won't spin up, you won't hear it, and it'll still breeze through all of those tasks without slowing down ever. And again, this is just the base model. Obviously then, there is the brand new design. When Apple released this in the 14 inch last year, they went back to basics. They essentially updated the 2015 version, which a lot of people say is the best MacBook ever made. And they essentially, like I said, updated it. They brought back the more squared off design. It's not very rounded anymore. It's much flatter where the 16 to 21 models tapered inside to make them look thinner than they really were. And where those models had only had only two to four USB-C ports, which was really annoying. This has everything you need. One, it has MagSafe again. Why they ever got rid of that, I never know, but they've brought MagSafe back and this can rapid charge it, which is amazing. So one, you don't have to waste one of your USB-C ports to charge it. You still have three and they're Thunderbolt 4. So you've got two on this side and one on this side. You've also got a high impedance headphone jack. And most importantly, you have an SD card slot back and HDMI back. You also, of course, get the stunning 16.2 inch XDR display with 120 hertz ProMotion. And you can also get Stage Manager now with Mac OS 13, which will be coming out soon. This is the beta version of it, which I'm convinced was designed for the 16 inch screen. On the iPad Pro, the 11 inch that I have, I don't really use it that often. The screen's a bit too small. On the 13 inch and 14 inch versions of the MacBook, it's still a little bit too small. There's still quite not quite enough screen real estate for stage manager but on the 16 inch it's perfect i have my menu bar there and i have all of my open tabs here and i still have all of this big comfortable space to work off if you're someone who also likes like a two screen setup on your desktop well you don't really need to buy two monitors anymore this thing is massive have a look at this this is how it looks on my desk and that's a 27 inch monitor. It doesn't actually look 11 inches smaller in my opinion anyway. It's still very comfortable to work off. Or if you just want to use it on its own, this is a much better standalone, essentially desktop laptop than the MacBook Air will be or any of the smaller MacBook Pros or older MacBook Pros will be. Another benefit is traveling. Now I know you might say this is the one area you think, eh, no, I'll skip the 16 and go for the 14 or the Air. But honestly, this is brilliant for traveling. In the past three months, I have gone on two big trips, one to the US and Canada, and one to Spain for a week. And I brought this with me both times, and at no point did I think I could work at anything less than 100% while I was gone. I sure as hell did not think that when I had the 13-inch Pro. I just didn't. It was really uncomfortable to work on because it's too small. This, though, is beautiful. I was still able to do full video editing for clients with the comfort of this big screen and the enormous trackpad. I was still able to design websites. Again, big screen, lots of real estate, really easy to see where I'm going and navigate. Writing blogs, super comfortable. This keyboard is beautiful to type on, really, really comfortable to work off. Spreadsheets, easy peasy, same sort of thing, lots of space. Zoom calls, the updated 1080p camera is great. Everything was extremely comfortable and really especially comfortable because of, again, the insane battery life. The week in Spain, I was doing, it was a holiday, so I wasn't working too much, but I was still doing between maybe one and three hours of work a day. 
and I did not plug this in to charge once. When I got on the plane to do a little bit of work and watch a little bit of video when I was on the plane home from Spain, it still had about 15% battery left after seven days of working regularly. Yes, it is heavy. It's a chunky boy, there's no getting around that. It is big, but if you actually think about it, it's only about the same size as the old 15 inch. So for a 16 inch screen in this size, it's really not that bad. Apple have designed this very cleverly. Obviously the bezels on the screen are tiny and it fits in every backpack. The backpack that I have is rated for 15 inch laptops at the most. And this fits in and still jiggles around a little bit because it's so small for the size that you're getting. And it's a good trade-off for the amount of power that you're getting while you're on the go. Believe it or not, this actually fits even pretty comfortably on your lap or even on the table of an airplane. Everything else then? Well, the speakers are enormous and absolutely incredible. The keyboard, as I mentioned, it's lovely to type on. Every modern Apple keyboard is the best keyboard in the world. Trackpad, like I said, it's way too big, but it makes working on the go, especially, you know, photo and video editing on the go, really, really easy. So there we go, that is a long-term review. I've had this for about nine or 10 months now of the 2021 MacBook Pro 16 inch with the M1 Pro chip. Major negatives, well, if like me, you think the size of the screen is worth the trade-off of the slight weight, then none. There are no negatives to this laptop that I can see. It has all the ports you could possibly need. It has all the power you could possibly need. It's a big enough laptop to work as a desktop on its own. And whether you need all the power right now or you're just investing in something that's going to last and get updates and still be powerful and fast for 10 years, th this is it. This is the best laptop in the world. But should you buy one to run your small business from? Again, yes, if you can afford it. And that, that's all it comes down to really is if you can afford it. Again, this is expensive, but you can get them refurbished from Apple already, even here in Ireland where refurbished is not much of a thing. And they're just under 2,500 quid, which is not bad for everything you're getting out of this. This one in particular was three grand new with the one terabyte hard drive. And the one terabyte versions are about 2,700 quid now renewed, which is amazing. And refurbished Apple products are brand new for, for all the difference it makes. Again, even if you know you'll never use the full power, it's still an incredible investment because you'll never have to worry about it slowing down. This thing will last a very, very long time. It's a great investment. It's a brilliant laptop. And if you want something big, powerful, it's going to last a long time, is beautiful to look at, is great for watching content on. This is it. This is your laptop and your desktop and your business running tool all in one. I highly recommend it. I'll leave links down below to where you can get them at a discounted price. And yeah, that's all there is to say about it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, I'll be giving away a pair of AirPods once I hit a thousand subscribers. So do hit that bell. Thanks as always for watching. I have been Sean from SMK Marketing. We'll see you in the next one.